All right, welcome to uh, video two of this series about project planning. And in this video, I'm going to talk about project phases. So what are project phases? A phase, according to the PIMBOK guide, is a collection of logically related project activities that culminates in the completion of one or more deliverables. In other words, they are, uh, um, they are tasks that we group them together because when we group them together, those are the tasks that allow us to achieve a certain deliverable. In other words, it makes sense that they are together. A project life cycle or your whole project is nothing more than a series of different phases. And phases will basically help you structure your project into something that is more manageable. As human beings, we have a huge difficulty imagining things that are very large. So we tend to break them up into small components because those small components are easier to understand, easier to manage. Now, focus need to uh, the focus here is that phases need to be focused on deliverables, on things that I must deliver not on calendar times, not on functions, not on departments. In other words, you're going to divide phase by the characteristics you want to achieve on your project and not, for example, say, oh, phase one is marketing, phase two is engineering, phase three is finance. It does not work like that. OK, you have to really define them by deliverables. Otherwise, uh, the tasks will not make sense between themselves. So what are the characteristics of a phase? Well, Every phase will have a focus or a goal that is based upon the set of deliverables or macro level project risk consideration. In other words, at the end of each phase, there is something that you must achieve. And the activities that you have in each phase, they're not always related to the same department. You typically have activities from all the different departments. You will have activities that are more related to finance, activities that are more related to engineering, activities that are more related to other things. In each phase, you have to look at it as a mini project. All right. There's going to be a budget for each phase. There's going to be at work for each phase. There's a schedule for each phase. Phases are usually sequential. In other words, phase two will come after phase one. Phase three will come after phase two. This is the normal part, but sometimes they can overlap, which means that phase two might begin before phase one is 100 percent complete. And we'll talk about that in future videos. Um, closure of a phase includes the acceptance and transfer of those phase deliverables. In other words, once I finish phase one, whatever I achieved from phase one is transferred to phase two. OK, and if a phase is closed, that means that the stakeholders or the project manager or your or senior management has approved that whatever was created in phase one is good enough to go into phase two. There's actually at the end of the phase, there's normally a meeting. We call them a, a phase gate decision. So this is a decision to start or to end a new phase. And there's typically five decisions that can be held here. The first option is you have a go decision. In other words, all right, let's imagine we just finished phase, phase one. So, all right, whatever you did in phase one is good. You can now start phase two. That's it. That's the best decision you can have. You might also have second option, which is a conditional go. And a conditional go states, all right, you can start phase two, but there's a couple of things I want you to change in phase one. So phase one is not done yet, but you can start phase two already. Fa option three, resubmission. This is when the work uh, of the phase one in this case is not good enough and you have to go back and redo it. You are not authorized to start phase two and you must redo the phase one, which tends to happen, unfortunately, uh, that's life. But uh, uh, a lot of times this decision means that you have to go back and change quite a lot of things. Uh, some things might be small to change, some things might be larger. Option four, hold decision. You did everything all right, phase one is complete, but we're not gonna start phase two yet because of a variety of reasons. For example, maybe the money is not available yet, many an emergency is in place and you have to halt the project. Finally, the last option is cancellation of the project. Maybe you did everything right, but they just decided to cancel the project because it's not worth it anymore. So uh, there's many different ways on how do we divide a project into phases. This is not something I'm going to go too much into detail, but there's many different uh, there's many different methods. There's methods like Six Sigma, Lean Management. In construction, for example, they have specific phases. And for most projects, for many, many projects, actually, not for most, sorry, for many projects, there are already phases defined and you can easily find them online. Uh, what are the best ways to divide a project into phases for the type of project you're looking? 
But there is a common understanding that deliverables should provide should be provided at each stage, at the end of each phase. Now, best practices, tools, and templates for each stage uh, need to be incorporated into a document we call later, uh, that we speak later on called the lessons learned. So as you can see, the faces of the project are more there, are there not just to, to make the project seem nicer, but actually they have a very practical implication, which is allowing us to manage our project in a way that is easier to understand, that is easier to manage. But remember, faces need to be divided need to be divided according to deliverables, not according to a calendar or to departments. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next video of this mini series.